<laughs> What's up there, Chloe? About the end of the day and ready to go to bed, huh? <laughs> Just about running out of daylight here, but I have time to make another video. Uh, <laughs> I have that motor generator um, I was um, using um, as an idler motor, and I, I got it out of the basement. And uh, I thought I'd show it. Uh, I don't know... Um, if people know what a motor generator looks like. So I can just make a quick little uh, video and show a motor generator out of the Monarch 10 E that now both ends are burnt out. Let's have a look at that thing. Okay, here it is. Now, here is a dual armature, and this is why they call it a motor generator. Yeah, you better knock it off. And uh, <laughs> she... She does get on people's nerves, I think. So this is the AC motor part here. And of course, this is the, the direct current armature. And what happened here is, is it got overheated and it burned a hole in it. And I covered that with epoxy glue because I wanted to use uh, as an idler motor for my uh, uh, homemade uh, Gomer Pyle uh, phase converter. Um, and, uh, you know, it actually kind of worked okay because it, it had this mass. And this is like a 3200 RPM motor, so this, this thing really spun up and it, it seemed to work okay. Except for it just wasn't adequate. And plus, this thing's nearly, you know, 75 years old. So this is uh, the later style of uh, the Reliance motor generator which is also known as a leonard drive i do believe and this end here had the brushes i i removed that you see the commutator there and uh i'll probably keep this uh around as a core in case somebody needs it they can be rewound i would imagine they'd have to press this stuff off here but let's have a look at the oh the central part of it here. Now here's the AC end. And here's what's smoked right here. You, you can see it cooked. Sort of cooking them windings out. And this thing was was really putting some smoke out from, uh, I guess, sitting there single phasing or something. Or, you know, age or everything. But that's what it was doing, sitting there buzzing because um, the... Uh, oh. That uh, phase static phase converter burned out, and then I flipped the the breaker around. Okay, here here's the uh, uh, the generator coils here. Now on top here sits a um, another generator. It's small, and I'll, I'll have it in, in the picture. You can see it in the end of my other 10 E. It sits on top of this. And it excites the fields, provides uh, uh, current for the fields, I believe for the generator and the motor, but I'm not sure. Um, now, this being the later style, there's, with, with the piggyback uh, exciter, now, they reverse the mounts. So the early style exciter will have these two points uh, um, at the back let's see if I can roll that around and figure out the orientation okay here's the third mount here uh, for the modern exciter so the modern exciter belt driven off here up to here it mounts there but the early exciters mounted to it the the mount was reversed and so it have a one one deal there and I couldn't find the correct exciter at one time for this and I managed to adapt an early exciter that didn't put out enough voltage and I looked in a, one of their old uh, manuals and it showed that they had a larger pulley here so I tried that and sped up an early exciter and it worked it, it, it worked but then I finally found the correct uh, exciter um, uh, that another guy had and he needed the exciter I had so <laughs> kind of worked out fine there there tends to be more motor generators than there are exciters <laughs> it seems to be a problem there too
So the earlier style that uh, has the the single bolt up here, this is more open. And the same with the exciter. I guess you could say this is more of a modern design. If you look at the old books and stuff, you'll see that. The model on that, so I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Let's see, let's see if it says that on there. Model number 3V8. And the panels uh, for these exciter, uh, for this uh, later uh, motor generator uh, that I've seen say 3V8 on them. And I don't know when they introduced this later style uh, motor generator, but um, I, I think a lot of earlier lathes uh, were replaced uh, with these. So that's kind of uh, what's up with the. Uh, the Monarch 10 E motor generator that doesn't really have a, an exact end date, like uh, the uh, works in a drawer tube drive, the first uh, tube drive uh, ended in 1959, and the module drive ended in 1983, the year of the one I have for sale in here. Um, now, the motor generator put out pure DC, and, and the tube drives, uh, not so much. They, <laughs> they use some uh, uh, step-up transformers up to 600 volts, then run it through those thyrotron tubes to uh, clean it up. But yet, even though they turn it to uh, DC, it still has a 60 cycle pulse in it from the mains, where, where this is totally separated. When you know that camera had shut off again, it's got, a, it's got a full battery. Well, anyway, the blade was telling me uh, that these old, uh, this is like the old torpedo welders they used in the shipyards. And I believe they had an exciter too. And the very first motor generators, there's three styles. The very first had the exciter as part of this, uh, uh, it hooked on, or it was a triple armature, I don't know. And then the next style, they put the exciter belt driven here, and then this is the late style where they just kind of uh, uh, beef things up a little bit, made it a little bit uh, more reliable. Now, the motor generator, uh, it, it, it's very, very smooth with that uh, pure uh, DC power and has the great dynamic braking and, and, and things like that. But it doesn't have speed compensation that the, uh, the uh, vacuum tube rectified uh, systems have. But they kind of make up for it with a giant three horsepower uh, DC motor that, that is absolutely huge, it's the size of a 50 horsepower uh, or even bigger uh, AC motor. And it's got a giant heavy uh, armature in it, it gets a lot of torque. So they, they kind of uh, uh, rely on a lot of momentum, you know. But the, uh, the later tube drives um, have speed compensation uh, and uh, quick slow down uh, dynamic braking, just uh, slowing down in speeds rather than just flipping the lever to uh, off and the dynamic brake comes in. So the dynamic brake can use to kind of quickly lower the speed while you're adjusting the speed, not just when you shut things up. I thought I'd try to explain a little bit of that. And uh, this is a very robust drive. Uh, uh, it's called the motor generator drive. Uh, it used to be called, everybody used to call it motor driven. A motor driven 10 double E. Very desirable because, uh, oh, before, uh, oh, back in the 90s and stuff, there just wasn't very many people that had any kind of idea to work on them. And, uh, and the knowledge started kind of coming out, and uh, it's not so bad. You can keep these things going. Okay, I hope that was educational enough. Uh, 
and this is uh, <laughs> what almost burnt my house down. Well, besides me, but that yeah, that got pretty darn hot. One more look at that. You see, it's burning the stuff off. It's even worse on that other side there. Yeah. Hey, look down in there. You can see clear through and see the two sets of coils. Okay. Hey, have a good night, and uh, I'll be up at 4.30.